Welcome back to the Gentleman's Gazette. Today's video is all about Ray-Ban Wayfarer sunglasses, their history, how the style evolved over time, and what glasses to buy, and a lot more. <laughs> Today, Wayfarers are one of the most sold and most popular sunglasses on the planet, and people like JFK or Bob Dylan have worn them, and even Andy Warhol loved them. However, it wasn't always like that. In the 70s, the Wayfarers almost disappeared completely from the market space, and they were originally designed in 1952 and launched to the market in 1956. The company behind the Wayfarers was Bausch & Lomb, which was the parent company to Ray-Ban. At the time, most sunglasses had a wireframe, and the Wayfarers were supposed to be the mid-century classic alternative to rival the Eames chair or the Cadillac tail fins. They were also one of the first sunglasses to be injection molded, which was a new process, but today that's the standard. To learn more about this procedure, please check out our guide on sunglasses for men here. Surprisingly, the shape of Wayfarers has changed a lot over time. Originally, they were much more cat-like, and then slowly but surely developed an angle and the look I'm wearing here right now, which is from around the 1980s. This tilt is also known as the panoscopic tilt, as you can see here. The problem with these sunglasses was that you couldn't really wear them on your head without them falling down, and so Ray-Ban decided to create a new design that would mitigate that issue. They introduced the design RB2132, which you can see right now, and not only did it get much smaller, it also lacked the distinctive cat eye look, and from the side, you can see the angle was different too. After declining sales in the 70s, the real breakthrough for Wayfarer sunglasses came in 1981, when the actors in Blues Brothers wore them. The sales in 81 were about 18,000 pairs of Wayfarers per year, and Ray-Ban realized they had to invest some money to do some product placement, and it paid off big time. So other famous movies with the Wayfarers include Risky Business, and a few years later, they already had 350,000 pairs a year, went all the way up to 1.8 million pairs of Wayfarers a year. Over time, Wayfarers would appear in more than 60 movies and Hollywood shows, and it was a great example of how product placement can really help to revive an almost dead product. In 1999, Bausch & Lomb sold the Ray-Ban sunglass brand to Luxottica, which is an Italian brand and the largest sunglass conglomerate in the world today. So who can wear Wayfarers? Well, the modern ones can be worn by oval, round, and oblong face shapes. To learn more about how to find the best pair of sunglasses for your face shape and skin tone, check out this video here. If you want an older pair of Wayfarers, such as these Wayfarer 2 from the 1980s, your best bet is to go to vintage stores and eBay. In general, Wayfarers are fantastic casual sunglasses. You can even wear them with a suit if they're not too flashy and in dark colors, such as dark brown tortoise shell or black. Personally, I'd suggest to avoid white colored frames or really bold colors because they don't work with most people's skin tones and just look bad. So today, you can find three new pairs of Wayfarers. One style is a so-called new Wayfarer, which you can see me wearing here right now. It doesn't have much to do with the original shape, but that's what it's called today. More angled version, like in the 1980s, is not really to be had anymore new, but there is a style called the original Wayfarer. Ironically, it doesn't have the original shape at all, but it's much more like the style you know from the 1981 Blues Brothers movie. If you travel a lot and you want to pack your sunglasses into a very small space, you can get the foldable wayfarers, which can be folded at the temple and in the middle. While modern wayfarers are made from injection molded plastic, you can find vintage ones which were made with acetate. Due to its popularity, wayfarers are also one of the most faked pairs of sunglasses, so when you buy one, make sure you get them from a trusted source or check for little hallmarks. Original Ray-Ban Wayfarers will always have a metal joint and the old ones have a P&L engraved onto their lenses. Also, the workmanship is always very neat. The Ray-Ban stands out. The stickers are shiny. 
They're not just glue, but they have something static on them. So pay attention to that. Like always in life, if the deal seems to be too good to be true, it probably is. Original, authentic Wayfarers cannot be had for 10 bucks. So if you don't want to spend $150 on Wayfarers, you can look at other brands because basically every other brand today makes their interpretation of Wayfarers the slightly adjusted style. Sometimes you can find them in wood or horn or other interesting materials. To learn even more about Wayfarers, such as what specific models we recommend and how to spot a fake, please check out our in-depth guide on the website here. Thank <laughs> you.